Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Saturday. Hope we had a wonderful work week and hopefully we're relaxing some on this weekend and all things considered a pretty nice day out there for most of us today, but really starting tomorrow and uh, kind of the days after another severe weather event likely on the way. Uh, and this one's going to be a bit of a one-two punch for some folks, uh, kind of one area tomorrow that we're watching and then another uh, kind of bigger area that we've heard a lot of talk about for the past week or so, uh, really beginning Monday and going into Tuesday. So again, it's April after all, a lot of uh, uh, just kind of severe weather to be talked about this month as you would kind of normally expect. Uh, now I do apologize this video is coming out a little bit later today. I had a long night last night and a uh, kind of, uh, excuse me, busy morning this morning. So again, kind of this got pushed back a little bit. Also, this is probably going to be simplified a little bit uh, just because it is the weekend after all. And it's always good, I think, to maybe just make things a little simpler on the weekend. Um, so I guess with all that said, we go ahead and jump right into it and uh, start talking about some weather here. Now, taking a look at our watches, warning, and advisory map, the big story today is just going to be the leftover wind for a lot of folks here from New York uh, all the way down into Pennsylvania and into the Appalachia chain. Uh, again, could see winds gusting up near 45, even 50 miles an hour in these higher elevations, and that's why we have those wind advisories in place. Also, though, it could be a tad windy into portions of the Carolinas and Georgia this afternoon and even uh, up into uh, Virginia and kind of along the I-95 corridor, uh, just not quite to uh, wind advisory criteria. So nonetheless, though, uh, watching out for that. Also, we do have some red flag warnings back into portions of Kansas, Colorado, and then back into Iowa and Minnesota. So again, uh, kind of windy conditions for a lot of folks today. Uh, so again, if you are burning anything, just make sure that you are taking those precautions or preferably just don't do it at all if you're under one of those red flag warnings. All right, satellite imagery, a little bit different than normal. We're going to look at true color just because we're late enough in the day that the sun is out over the entire country, and I think it's just kind of a little bit of a pretty map, so uh, we'll take a look at it. And uh, again, the big story that we've been talking about the past couple of days is this big area here, all this cloudiness, this area of low pressure over the northeast, and uh, this is continuing to slowly work on through. Um, it's been a rather cloudy afternoon, again, for a lot of folks from Pennsylvania up through Maine. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we've had, again, really a beautiful day for a lot of folks here from the southeast into the uh, Midwest, even into much of the West Coast in general. Just a lot of us having a really nice Saturday out there. So definitely make sure you get out there and enjoy it again before things once again go downhill here in a couple of days. And uh, speaking of things going downhill in a couple of days, the other thing I want to mention on this map, uh, kind of two areas actually, but uh, is uh, this big spin off the coast of California. Now that is bringing a lot of cloud cover into coastal California. It's going to bring some rainfall. It's going to bring some thunderstorms. It's going to bring a lot of mountain snow as well. Uh, it's definitely going to be a big story here throughout the next couple of days for you folks out there. But also what happens after California as this crosses into the Four Corners region, uh, eventually into uh, kind of the uh, central United States, again, really going to bring a severe weather threat with it as that wind energy and that cold air associated with that storm system uh, kind of begins to overlap with some of that uh, Gulf air that we often see rising north uh, this time of year. Now, I know I've been talking a lot on this map, but one final thing I'll mention is look at this little area of cloud cover uh, kind of over the Dakotas and Minnesota right now. That might not look like much, but uh, eventually we're going to get some low pressure to kind of develop out of this um, short wave here. And uh, likely that is going to lead to a severe weather threat tomorrow from Ohio into Pennsylvania, uh, up even into portions of the Northeast. And we could see some really feisty storms out of this, including uh, very strong straight line winds, um, some isolated hail, and also a couple tornadoes are not out of the question from again Ohio through Pennsylvania uh, into New York State uh, maybe Connecticut Massachusetts do not want you folks in the Northeast to let your guard down tomorrow as some feisty storms are really likely to kind of work on through all right, current radar imagery, again, uh, in the northeast, we do have some scattered showers, obviously, that we are working with. Also, some isolated snow probably mixing in here into the higher terrains of New York State. Uh, and if anyone's watching from kind of uh, this circled area of the Pennsylvania-New York State line, uh, definitely let me know if you saw some snow overnight. Again, some of that was forecasted, so uh, let me know if any of that stuck. Again, mainly probably in the higher elevations on those grassy surfaces, but again, anybody watching there, would love to hear um, from you about that. Also up north again, look at these rain showers. This is associated with that very quick moving short wave that I mentioned to you. And uh, again, this is kind of diving off towards the south and east very quickly. And by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon, again, uh, kind of very feisty storms likely to break out up here. And uh, would not be surprised at all to see, um, you know, severe thunderstorm watches, maybe even a tornado watch issued tomorrow afternoon for some of those storms. And we'll take a look at that a little more in depth here in just a moment. 
Uh, but final thing you need to notice here on radar is again out here in California, all of this rain slowly working in out of the Pacific and even up into southern Oregon as well here. Uh, some rain showers kind of working on through. So uh, kind of all those different storm systems that we're talking about, Storm 1, Storm 2, and Storm 3. So kind of a uh, three-storm uh, three storm event here this weekend. All right, so let's talk about tomorrow a little bit. Again, we already have a uh, marginal and a slight risk of severe weather for a lot of folks in here. And I think personally, uh, this map is pretty good from the Storm Prediction Center. If anything, I would expect it to maybe get extended upwards a little bit here uh, into New Jersey, southern New York State, into Connecticut, Rhode Island, and maybe even Massachusetts here uh, into uh, tomorrow afternoon. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. But I definitely agree, slight risk is a pretty smart idea here. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to maybe even see a wind-driven enhanced risk uh, added tomorrow afternoon as again this looks like a pretty feisty squall line uh, it's going to work on through all right, let's time it out for you a little bit. By the time this video is getting posted, this is probably about what it looks like up into the Northeast. Again, some scattered rain and snow showers through much of upstate New York and even down into the Catskills as well. And then just some scattered rain showers from Long Island up through uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Uh, some heavier downpours and maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder working on through Maine this afternoon as well. Can't even roll out some gusty winds and maybe some small hail uh, with some of those. Now, as we move through this afternoon, all of that slowly works out of here, slowly fizzles out a little bit, and this is getting into tomorrow morning. So here we go, about 5 a.m. Eastern time, moving to 6, 7, 8 a.m., and uh, here's that uh, storm system you'll see on the way uh, right here. We've got it kind of working on through some of our Great Lakes regions, uh, kind of sliding on through Minnesota, excuse me, um, Michigan rather, uh, Michigan in the morning, so the UP of Michigan. I know I've got some viewers there, likely some rain tomorrow morning, maybe some rumbles of thunder, uh, but it's really tomorrow afternoon that this kind of kicks off. and. Uh, uh, this is our high resolution rapid refresh model and uh, know what kind of happens here. Again, getting into tomorrow afternoon about 11 a.m., this uh, piece of energy working on through upstate New York, bringing some heavy rainfall, some rumbles of thunder, uh, some maybe a little, bit of, a little bit of mountain snow mixed in, but really on the highest peaks, if anywhere, uh, sees that snow. It's what happens a little bit later on though. Uh, you'll notice as we get a little bit further ahead into time, this is that low pressure, this kind of closed off area, this closed ISO bar here. Uh, getting into tomorrow afternoon about two o'clock. Again, most of this probably not too severe, but uh, we've got a couple embedded areas here of maybe some spin, maybe a little bit of wind energy that kind of makes it down to the surface. Um, but it's really into the evening hours. Here we go, about 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. and then into 7 p.m. This is when things really kick off. Uh, at this point, we're going to have a lot of thunderstorm fuel out there. Uh, this forcing from the slow pressure is going to run into that thunderstorm fuel, and we're going to get a lot of rising motion here and likely very quickly a feisty line of storms to develop here uh, from, again, the Catskills into western Massachusetts all the way back likely into Ohio. Uh, and this is slowly going to dive southward through Pennsylvania uh, and into eventually uh, the I-95 corridor. This is getting into about 9 p.m. here. Again, just kind of this uh, segment of storms, this line of very strong storms. Uh, definitely two severe criteria, I think. Probably uh, some severe thunderstorm warnings going to be issued tomorrow afternoon. Main threat, as I mentioned, is going to be strong straight line winds, but can't rule out a little bit of hail or an embedded kind of QLCS tornado uh, within this. And in fact, we could even see uh, maybe on the backside, some of these storms try to become a little bit more isolated back towards Ohio and Pennsylvania uh, into the overnight hours. But the good news is once this hit uh, hits, it's going to swing on through pretty quickly. And by the time we're waking up again on uh, Sunday morning, uh, excuse me, Monday morning rather, sorry, uh, things should be clearing out a good bit and that severe weather threat will die down pretty quickly during the overnight hours. Another model I'll show you, the NAM model, again, agrees, uh, but this uh, the NAM model is a little quicker here in terms of developing this line of storms. It starts at a little feistier here um, and, uh, again, kind of gets it going a little bit sooner. So this is about 6 p.m., probably an hour or two behind our last model. And again, though, same story, feisty line of storms from uh, central New York State all the way back down into Ohio, and some of these storms even a little bit more discreet in nature as they try to roll on through here. Again, swinging on through, this is getting into about 9 p.m. Uh, still feisty line of storms from probably Connecticut all the way through Ohio, maybe getting as far west there as Indiana. Uh, and again, we'll definitely continue to watch that before again swinging on through kind of the state college area uh, into northern New Jersey, into New York City, likely during the evening and overnight hours uh, before things really die down uh, kind of going into uh, past the midnight hour. Uh, so one thing I will mention uh, very briefly here that is different between the two models, as I said, is a little bit more coverage back here towards Indiana and Ohio. 
Uh, now, overall with this setup, most of the thunderstorm fuel we have is going to be back into this circled area. That's where our cape values are going to be a little bit higher. So if we can get that forcing to kind of develop back there and these storms are maybe even a little bit more discreet in nature, uh, we could see, you know, maybe uh, some of a more of a supercellular characteristics uh, with some of these storms, including a small tornado threat. Uh, definitely not out of the question. All right, uh, let's take a look at a sounding or two here. Again, I'm trying to incorporate these in my videos a little bit more. I think it's kind of fun to get into the meteorology behind it a little bit. And uh, obviously, as I'm getting a little bit further in my degree and uh, learning about these things a little bit more on the daily, I can kind of inform you a little bit more and break this down uh, a little bit more for you. So uh, this is a skew T log P and a um, uh, hodograph map kind of put together. And uh, what this helps us as forecaster do is just kind of forecast the intensity of thunderstorms and whether really they will form at all. Uh, so this sounding was taken over kind of the heart of that severe weather risk tomorrow into Pennsylvania. And uh, we'll start on the right hand side here and we'll look at this chart. So this is a hodograph. Basically what this tells us uh, is kind of storm motion as well as um, the wind shear in the atmosphere. And to not get too in depth with it, uh, right now at least, uh, just know that kind of right now we have a bit of a curving hodograph, although not super elongated. So uh, this is definitely pretty supportive for strong straight line winds. Um, and, uh, you know, even maybe an isolated tornado or two, but really I think wind is going to be the bigger threat tomorrow. Uh, the other side of this map is our skew T log P, which helps us kind of look at the thermodynamic side of uh, these thunderstorms. And uh, you'll notice uh, temperature is probably going to be in about the 60s, the dew points in the lower 60s as well, maybe even mid 60s. Uh, and, um, you know, we definitely have some cape showing up on this map, and we can find that by kind of following our parcel path uh, and combined with our wet bulb, kind of that space in between here uh, tells us our cape, or if you want to look at it even easier, uh, just down here at this kind of area, uh, that has our Cape chart getting up near about 2000 joules per kilogram at the surface and about that same value through most of the layers of the atmosphere. So uh, very um, conducive here for strong straight line winds, some, you know, uh, maybe even some large hail as well, not out of the question, or at least um, uh, hail in general, maybe not super large, but um, you know, we'll definitely monitor that. Again, though, tornado threat also not zero, not super high with this setup, but uh, big enough that we need to worry about it at least a little bit uh, going into tomorrow afternoon as those storms roll on through. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and start talking about the West Coast. We actually do have a small risk of severe weather today, kind of right into the heart of Oregon there uh, through much of the central part of the state, and we'll definitely need to watch out for that uh, as we kind of roll on into this afternoon for you folks out West. Now, speaking of that, let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit more and uh, kind of time this out for you. So this afternoon, big story is just going to be scattered rain showers, scattered thunderstorms, uh, heavy at times from southern Oregon all the way down into California, as well as mountain snow in the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, and that same general idea is really going to continue here for a while, throughout the afternoon, throughout the evening. Uh, again, kind of later this afternoon and evening is when we could see some of those storms try to become a little bit stronger into Oregon. Uh, but again, main threat there would be strong straight line winds and some isolated hail as well. Tornado threat is really just about zero uh, for you folks. Now, continuing this into overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning, by the time we're waking up uh, tomorrow morning out west, again, some mountain snow into the Sierra Nevadas, but also here uh, kind of into the northern tier of California. We've got some cold air being supplied in here, uh, kind of on the backside, thanks to some uh, other kind of factors in the atmosphere here. And again, that's going to help to lead to that transition from rain to snow, uh, again, for those higher elevations. But the good news is for anybody with weekend plans is, uh, or at least uh, early next week plans, is after we get through today and into tomorrow after afternoon, and especially by the time we're getting into our morning hours of Monday, things slowly begin to clear out. So again, this is quite early in the morning on Monday for West Coast, but uh, at this point, again, any of that low pressure is really just bringing some mountain snow through Nevada, Utah, and into uh, maybe some areas of Colorado as well, but really drying out through much of the West Coast by the time we get into Monday. But before we do that, again, some uh, somewhat uh, impressive rainfall totals here on the way. One to three inches of rain likely for most folks here uh, along the California coast from San Francisco all the way down to uh, Los Angeles. So definitely enough to uh, kind of help uh, continue to ease any kind of drought concerns, which again, luckily we've been so wet out in California. It's quite a, uh, you know, a green state right now, which is out of the norm a little bit, but definitely some good news from all of these um, uh, active West Coast storms we've seen uh, really throughout much of this year and even back into uh, kind of last year we had that same general pattern. So drought just about eliminated in California, which of course is good news. 
The other thing that helps to uh, eliminate that drought is all the snowpack in the higher terrains. And uh, again, more of it on the way. Uh, we are getting pretty deep into April here, but oftentimes these snowpacks last well into even the summer uh, for a lot of these higher terrains out into the Rockies. So uh, here we go. Again, another uh, maybe foot of snow on the way for much of the Sierra Nevadas, maybe even upwards of two feet in those highest elevations, but also uh, these higher terrains of Northern California getting in on some snow, uh, which, uh, you know, they haven't seen too much this uh, winter, at least compared to the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, so again, some snow on the way for you folks as well. All right, let's uh, talk about this uh, severe storm threat into the Great Plains now. And uh, again, all of it is really going to be due to that storm in California. It's slowly going to work eastbound, and by the time we're getting into Monday, uh, here we go. This big low pressure here with kind of this troughing showing up on your map uh, is going to help to do a couple things. One, pull up Gulf moisture, and two, kind of uh, bring in this low-level jet to supply some dry air and uh, some uh, favorable kinematics. Um, on uh, you know the right hand side of this trough or this low pressure. So again, really a classic severe weather setup for the Great Plains here for this time of year. We've got the low pressure, we've got the Gulf moisture, uh, we've got uh, the wind energy, we've got just about everything you need. And because of that, uh, Storm Prediction Center already issuing those threat areas, including an enhanced risk of severe weather for day three. So this is going to be into Monday, but really Monday evening uh, and into the overnight of Monday more than anything else. That enhanced risk from Oklahoma City uh, back into the uh, Red River Valley and even up into uh, portions of extreme south central Kansas, but that marginal risk and slight risk extending well outward of that. So again, a lot of folks going to be under the gun for severe weather on Monday as well as Tuesday, uh, a slight risk issued for uh, much of Iowa, Illinois, uh, Missouri, even down into Arkansas and into the Texarkana area. Uh, again, could see some strong storms as the storm continues to slowly work eastbound uh, into the early half of this week. All right, let's time it out for you a little bit here. This is getting into Monday afternoon. Here's that low pressure now moving out of the Rockies into the Great Plains. And this is at the point where all of these ingredients are slowly going to kind of uh, begin to overlap. And finally, into the evening and overnight hours of uh, Monday, here's that storm growth beginning from South Dakota all the way down into Oklahoma and Texas. Again, seeing some of those storms begin to fire up, uh, likely becoming strong to severe, including all hazards on the table, uh, including potentially strong tornadoes. So definitely not out of the question with this. Uh, general setup and uh, then uh, we do it all again on Tuesday Tuesday afternoon here we go once more uh, storms firing from Minnesota and Iowa all the way back down likely into Arkansas and uh, again just a very impressive kind of springtime storm here going to fuel this uh, with once again all hazards on the table for Tuesday afternoon including tornadoes a couple of which could become uh, even strong meaning EF2 strength or higher not out of the question all right, so why the severe weather? Well, again, the dew point values and that instability is really going to be, uh, well, quite juicy, to be honest, on Monday afternoon and evening. Here we go. Look at this plume of Gulf instability extending well northward, even up into the Dakotas. Some of these dew points getting up into the 50s, uh, but it's really this 60-degree uh, mark uh, in terms of dew point that we really want to watch. Uh, and uh, even further south than that, getting up near 70. So very muggy, moist, uh, humid, unstable air is going to be driven northward here as the storm moves in. And at the same time, look at this dry air. Uh, so that dry line, we're going to have a bit of a dry line set up out of this probably, uh, which is obviously uh, going to help with some of... Uh, those um, ingredients for severe weather. Uh, that's Monday afternoon. Going into Tuesday afternoon, again, this plume of Gulf moisture continuing northward, bringing that severe weather threat. And another thing I'll mention throughout the week uh, is this Gulf moisture continues to get pulled northward uh, for a lot of folks here, even into the southeastern United States. So even if we don't see severe weather past Tuesday, uh, it's going to be a really muggy, almost kind of late spring, early summer-like uh, week for a lot of folks here uh, in the southeast and even up into the mid-Atlantic. Uh, for, again, the coming week. Now, Cape Values or Thunderstorm Fuel also going to be quite strong here. Uh, this is Monday evening. Again, you'll notice this plume of Cape becoming uh, stronger and getting very far north as well. Again, all the way up into the Dakotas. Uh, and then we'll do it all again on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, again, with that plume of Cape extending northward all the way into Iowa. Uh, so we'll definitely need to watch out for that as that is a big time ingredient for severe weather. 
Supercell Composite are just our ingredients for supercells to form Monday afternoon and evening. Again, quite strong over Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, Iowa, and even up into the Dakotas. And uh, that continues into the overnight and evening hours of Monday. And then again, it kind of reinvigorates itself a little bit on Tuesday afternoon. From Iowa down through Arkansas, uh, even into Illinois there, could see some strong storms on Tuesday. Uh, before we get into Wednesday afternoon, could do it again maybe. No threat area right now outlined, but the Ohio River Valley could see strong storms on Wednesday, not out of the question. And uh, maybe even later on the week, Thursday and Friday, some of those storms may also uh, try to form into the southeast. So we'll definitely watch that. We'll uh, kind of uh, monitor it for sure. But um, again, the bigger threat is going to be Monday and Tuesday as of right now. And another big reason for that is wind shear. So here we go. Monday afternoon and into Monday evening. Uh, very strong uh, bulk shear here, but really the low-level jet's going to be absolutely cranking here, pulling up uh, some of that uh, unstable air out of the south as well as that um, uh, dry air. And uh, all of that combined with, you know, the... Um, uh, lift and the kinematics that uh, are going to be brought with the storm system as well are going to cause problems. So nonetheless, wind shear very strong here showing up on uh, Monday, especially for Oklahoma and Texas. That's why that enhanced risk is in the south. Uh, and then again, continuing into our Tuesday, very strong shear values again over Missouri, Illinois, and Arkansas. So I think Tuesday could be honestly just as big of a day as Monday uh, for a lot of folks here as the storm system begins to roll on through. All right, pretty active uh, times ahead for a lot of folks. Uh, again, once we get past Tuesday, I think we'll get a little bit of a lull again, but I'm sure, again, it is April after all. We're likely going to kind of continue this pattern of strong storm systems with big time severe weather outbreaks uh, again through much of the spring. Alrighty, well, I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday out there, and I will see you all tomorrow.